welcome to all again uh, to our audience. We have got 15 uh, that I see who have already signed up. More, more are coming. And um, today's session is very much in conjunction with World Music Day, uh, which is endorsed by the UNESCO. And uh, what we have been doing, so when I say we, meaning stand for all maker space, right? In the good old days, we used to have physical activities in celebrating all the days which are or rather selected days which are endorsed by united nations you know uh, like world science day world maths day world engineering day world creativity and innovation day recently we did world uh, what we call environment day despite the lockdown uh, through the support of our, our co-organizers like uh, eco hub community we were able to bring a lot of excitement, right? So a little bit background to this particular series, which mainly will do the official introduction. I would just like to say that this is uh, our ongoing series of webinar sessions to keep our audience engaged. Our audience meaning all our STEM for all makerspace database. There are students, there are teachers, there are parents who are continuously looking for new programs. So this is one of the ways that we thought by bringing subject matter experts and trying to relate their daily programs or you know their uh, forte to what science is, uh, to what STEM is all about. So that's basically our objective. So to put on a record, we'd like to thank EcoHub community led by Mr. Ku for bringing this together. Mr. Ku has got a vast resource you know, of experts in every field especially on uh, environment, on eco. And that is very, very interesting because STEM for All Makerspace is about experiential learning. Right? So that's what we like to promote. And so when things get back to normal, we can do things which are relating to today's subject, that is music, all right? So uh, moving on, I would like to introduce to, uh, to you our host, uh, which is Ms. Lynn Maley. Ellie is a very good friend of ours, a very talented person uh, in music. She, oh, yeah, she, 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 she's the music teacher. Um, she's grinning because I think she's like, um, you know, she's overwhelmed by uh, the support that she has given us, not just through me. Today, the first time we're doing something on music, but her also, her interest and forte also lies in green. As you can see, her backdrop, you know, is glowing with, with some vegetables there, Millie. Your, 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 <laughs> Yeah, so, but yes, she, she, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we had the privilege of inviting mainly to teach uh, people how to make compost, you know, using all the discarded material. We also had the privilege of her teaching how to use uh, waste or, or cooked cooking, uh, sorry, recycling the cooking oil into something that is much more useful. And that's basically mainly, I think she has got lots of other areas of uh, expertise which we continue, hope to continue to engage with maybe and uh, Mr. Ku on this. So without further ado, I would like to uh, welcome Meili to, to host this particular session. Thank you, Ramesh. And thank you for everyone who's here, especially Mr. Eugene Lin. Let me say a few things about Mr. Eugene. He is actually the national manager in Malaysia for Trinity College London. And concurrently, he is the regional academic consultant for Trinity College in this whole Southeast Asian area. Now, he, he would like me to tell you that he actually started learning the piano at seven years old, okay? So there must have been enough parental support to actually be learning at that age, as we all know. And this is to encourage all parents, you know, who, who are actually listening to us today. And, uh, and he, he actually received several musical awards and obtained his music diplomas from Trinity College of Music and Guildhall as well. Then he gained his bachelor's degree at the University of London Goldsmiths College. One of the things that I know that um, Mr. Eugene did was he was actually very much responsible, but he will say that he is uh, one of the 
the persons who actually helped to form the undergraduate music program at the University of Malaya's Cultural Center. Okay, uh, that was in 1998. There he taught piano performance and theory of music. Okay, and um, of course he has a postgraduate degree in music education from UM here. Now, he is involved in Malaysian music education in various roles as a young lecturer, as well as being a past member of the Malaysian Qualification Agency. So he's adept both in classical as well as the rock music field. Okay, uh, me too. He has educated at uh, competitions and festivals all over the Southeast Asian region. So without much ado, I would like to welcome Mr. Eugene. Thank you for the introduction. Thank you, Meili, and thank you very much, Ramesh, for um, hosting us today, introducing this whole session. Um, welcome, everyone, either through this um, Zoom meeting or through the online stream that um, you're viewing us today. So in conjunction with um, World Music Day, um, I think we're here to also think about how the impact of music in learning. Um, Actually, I would like to, before even I start, um, it's good to know, you know, the type of audience that we are talking. And um, I believe um, Jack here has got something for you. If you could perhaps help us by starting off with this poll. If you could uh, click on this poll to identify yourself so we are aware of the audience that we are referring to right now. Are you a school teacher? Are you a music teacher? Or are you just a parent sending your children for lessons? Or are you yourself? A student, um, if you could ask you to please submit this poll. I think I'm just for the sake of Jack, I'll put myself down as a music teacher too. So at least you got one response from me. So yeah, I think it'd be useful if you could have this and if Jack let us know, so at least we can understand the audience to which we are referring to here. So, um, okay, yeah, Jack, just uh, we already have 12 out of. Uh, 18 person have voted. So we just wait for a few more minutes, perhaps another two or three more, we will have a uh, majority. So uh, while um, Jack is um, collating this info, um, I think there's already a, a lot of information out there about the benefits of, of music and music in, in what you call STEM education in science, technology, engineering, mathematics. So, um, and if, if you are not aware of it, I, if you could just let me, permit me to just quickly just share a few simple um, information. Uh, of course, if, um, oh, let me start from the beginning. Yes, in terms of STEM education. So, um, these are, as I go down my screen, if you don't mind, you can just uh, screen. Uh, so, okay, interestingly enough, we have uh, mainly parents sending their students, uh, their children for music lessons, as well as um, teachers themselves. She's a fan. Mainly, it's an interesting poll here. We've got um, a whole range of students as well as teachers attending today's session. So I think I'm going to try and make this message as broad based as we can to serve all your time that you're here with us. So as I said, um, if I just um, just scroll down my screens, you should be able to already see. Various different articles. Um, feel free to just a screenshot if you want to, and um, be able to just see what are the various different things that you can find in terms of benefits of music and linking music qualification to higher music attainment in terms of academic subjects. I'd like to let you know that these four articles that I just pulled up are actually just all done from the last year alone. So I'm not taking articles that are even 10, five years ago. I'm taking articles that just all just came in last year. They're already a lot for the last decade alone. But just to tell you, there's still ongoing research to confirm the benefits of music in our general educational learning. And specifically, there's one interesting one I thought I would just quickly run through. I don't take too much time. But for all of you who are out there who are parents who link yourself as parents, just simple evidence to show you the benefit of music education. Um, simply, it 
if you learn music, essentially it helps you to enhance your vocabulary. For those who learn music, they actually have a higher sense of vocabulary and verbal sequencing. Um, it supports cognitive function between a group of four to six year olds showing improved development in terms of after having 30 weeks, means essentially one year of music education. It develops reading and writing ability as well um, in terms of when they have music lessons to be able to demonstrate a higher level of um, writing, uh, reading skills, sorry, reading and writing skills. Um, Self-esteem, the fact that after children learn music over a number of years, they demonstrate what you call an improved um, confidence in themselves. Um, verbal memory, compared to adults who have not received music education, there's findings to show that there's a higher um, verbal retention in terms of remembering things. Um, IQ scores have shown to have improved for those who have had some form of music education. Developing empathy amongst those who have learned music possibly in terms of being able to have to work together in an in a group. Um, race maths and history scores. This is another finding that came about from those who have had some form of music educational learning. So um, as you can see already that um, it goes into teaching, planning ability, being able to have an increased awareness in terms of planning their time. Um, I can probably say this is probably because they have to run out for lessons and come back as well. So they have to organize themselves properly in order to do this. Um, encourage perseverance. Those who have had individual or group lessons have shown to have been more perseverance in terms of completing a task. Improve articulation. After receiving music lessons, they've shown to be able to improve in their speech. Protection against dementia. Now, this is an interesting one. It's shown that um, in, in terms of, uh, at an older age, those who have had um, a study of um, music education, some, some form of music learning um, has minimized uh, future dementia risk as well. Um, facilitating anxiety management, being able to regulate the emotions and anxiety, um, boosting standardized test scores. I'll come to this in a minute on this one. Um, and refining can can try to full screen it. Oh, okay. You want me to go into a full screen on this? Ah, on this yes, is it? Easier to see the ah, that's nice. Thank you. Okay, right. And and in terms of um, well, this one is talking about um, nurturing life um, happiness. Now um, if I were to just talk here for a second, I mean, there's a lot obviously for you all to consume at this point in terms of what we are saying. Um, music and the benefits of it. Um, but specifically, if I were to zoom in for a lot of us in Malaysia, I think your context of music or music education will be mainly more towards um, either your child learning music um, through private music lessons, or they could be perhaps being in a choir, a school band, or some form of music activity as extracurricular point. Um, are we agreeable on this? Can I just have a, maybe something in the chat that shows that um, for those of you who are listening to me right now, do you have any other points in which, okay, I've got some music students. Um, so of course you're a music student or you learn music that way. So these are the points in which um, the music education will come to be. Specifically, if um, you are learning music or learning a musical instrument, then I would say firstly that the, the next thing I was going to share with you might be of interest because this is a very recent um, uh, study that just came in about how instrumental learning actually helps in terms of attainment um, of a child. Okay. Now, just a few things. There's already the... the, uh, the, uh, the I can share later through um, Ramesh or, uh, or Meili the link to this article, but there are a few things I will want to raise to all of you who are parents sending your child for lessons, or if you yourself learning or some form of instrument or singing or music in that way. So the next thing I want to highlight to you is actual, oh, sorry. Uh, 
screen share went off. I apologize for that tech problem. Um, okay, let me just go back to your screen share. Now, I want to highlight to you the findings of this study. Now, it says here, playing a musical instrument made a statistical significant contribution to performances as key TH4. This is a UK um, research, okay, which means it's about SPM level. And it says this is for students who experience musical training has got advantages across all school subjects. Interestingly, specifically English and maths, but no improvement in sports. Very interesting. Okay, but I would like to highlight this very clearly. The finding shows more significance of learning of musical instruments after four, five years or more. So there was no significant difference when the child started learning music at a primary school age. So long and short, it actually sort of summarizes that if you just learn something for a year or two, you're not actually going to see much benefits apart from the fact that you know how to read Tao Ge and you can essentially play something. But there are long-term benefits in terms of music education on a child, but it's long-term. And to make that very clear from this finding, this is a 2020 finding. Um, it's printed in the Cambridge University Press. So it's not something that you can just pick up. And, and I think we need to make this really clear because we all live in a very instant world. Um, instant coffee, instant noodles, instant access. You know, you click something. And it's come to a point where uh, uh, there's a great amount of teachers who tell us that um, there is this expectation that a child can learn something like that because they can probably pick something up very quickly. That's true. But in terms of cognitive learning and everything about music, similar to like art, you can play a simple piece of music. I'm sure a Bailey can teach you how to play a simple Ba Ba Black Sheep in half an hour. Very easy. Right, Bailey? Yes. But the point we're trying to make here is that it's not just playing Ba Ba Black Sheep. The idea is that to be able to really have a sense of cognitive movement, um, coordination of eye, ear, hands, in a similar way as if you think in how physical education, and most of you will understand this correlation, um, all of us gone through from young age, physical education classes, what you call PE classes. And PE is good. It helps us in terms of our physical health and everything that goes along with it. In a similar analogy to that, in the music field, that would be akin to your child being in a band being in a choir, playing with other people in some form of musical making context. In terms of musical instruments learning, that is more specific to your child picking up specifically tennis, badminton in some coaching manner to pick up one specific sport, golf, or some other thing that they actually train to a higher level. And a lot of the parents who do send their children for music learning do need to understand that as they go through some of this, um, what you call stages of learning music, um, the, the individual skill of learning that instrument of singing, as you go through this skill accumulation, the actual objectives do lead you up to a degree level or post-secondary school level skill. If you think in that same way, if you're a tennis player, that would be equivalent of you actually being able to go into a state level competition kind of manner. Now, how many children get to that state level? Not many, right? So I think at the basic level here, we're talking about World Music Day. And I can tell you, if I ask all of you, what does music mean to you? If you could ask you just to populate into that chat, what does music mean to you personally, respective of whether you're a music teacher or you're not, or you're in the music industry or not? Put that down, what do you think music means to you? Um, everyone, if you can. I'll let you all um, sort of um,
Okay. As you can see from the chat, everyone's talking about the main finding, and I've been asking this question in the last 10 years when I talked to actually mainly teachers. The first thing that always come about is uh, to do with happiness, to do with a sense of relaxation, chill, being, uh, being in a sense of expressing their self in always a nice way, but also to do with um, the fact that they can reach out to others through music it means it's a form of a language. It's a form of reaching something out. So everybody understands these parts of what music actually does. It's not even just in education. It's, it's in your life. In, in fact, so much people do say that music is my life. You know, it's big. It's, it's about all that. So that is about the appreciation of music. When you talk about the education of music, you're talking about skills acquiring we are talking about picking something up. I think everyone needs to also understand that the expectation of this sometimes may be different from the person receiving it to the person giving it out. Okay. And this comes from the fact because actually, if you think about that journey that someone needs to take to be able to not just play Baba Black Sheep, but to do something with two hands, or in the case of mainly with a singer, to be able to actually reach across a wide spectrum of notes in tones and colors that can affect you to the point where you cry. It actually is a lot of effort and work. So um, I think we need to also understand this across a spectrum of education. Um, Everyone associates music with something that's always, you know, relaxing and nice, and that's very true. But the effort to make it work, it's a lot. I'm sure all of you may have heard of someone called Bruno Mars. Bruno Mars, um, together um, with um, Romsa, Mark Romsom, did this very famous work called um, Uptown Funk. You might have heard of it, um, right? So Uptown Funk, which was the number one hit, I think about um, four, five years ago. You know, I'm sure you know that work. You may want to know that the guitar part that was recorded for that piece of music was pre-recorded. I'm going to put in a chat, so you have to read the chat to know the number of times this piece was recorded. The guitar part for this piece called Uptown Funk was recorded 84 times. 84. Before they came up with the final version. Of okay, and it's just the guitar part. Huh? Just the guitar part, okay? Not the singing part, not the drum part, not the bass part. That's what actually it takes for that number one hit to be the number one hit that we all heard today. So, yes, we all feel, wow, that's great, uptown fire, it's real relaxed. But the effort that went into that work alone tells you there is a mountain to climb. But at the same time, of course, we would like to believe that parents and teachers all are in that journey with the student to make it happen in a way which, of course, will be pleasant for everyone. And of course, um, I have to say, for someone who works from an exam board, it's not easy to balance that part up. I remember years ago, um, years ago, there was this very funny um, uh, um, advertisement from McDonald's that had this child crying playing the piano. And if, if you're laughing, then you must be showing your age because it was way back over a long time ago. And the, the catch line was, go and have a happy meal. You get it? Go and have a happy meal. Okay, because the child was crying playing the piano. So the point of it is that um, I, I, as someone who was working in an exam board, I can totally understand uh, the stress in which um, the assessments can come into being. Uh, at the same time, we also recognize that from an assessment point of view, we try to refresh the type of music that a child can try now these days. And as you can see from my um, poster boards here, uh, we don't just do classical music, as you can see from this. We do um, rock and pop. So you don't have to just do Mozart. You can do Michael Jackson today. 
you don't have to just play the piano. You can sing Adele. You can do um, um, what else? Taylor Swift. You can play something on the drums. Um, with um, pop bands, rock or rock bands um, such as Coldplay. Of course, at the same time, you can still learn your Mozart, you know, or let Mailing coach you on how to sing something for Puccini. But the spectrum is very wide. It's very, very wide. That we just allow a child, any child, to have that musical journey. But at the same time, while we recognize the importance of music in STEM education, it's also important to recognize that the whole infrastructure has to be supported from everyone. Um, I wish to also highlight as well um, this national educational framework that we, um, you may be aware or not aware, but the, the Malaysian educational blueprint actually features music 11 times in that blueprint. Um, if I may just quickly reference this. Um, can you all see this, Ramesh? Um, so music is referenced 11 times in that national uh, blueprint, okay? It's listed actually as a core subject in school. It's also listed as part of what you call extracurricular activities that should be encouraged. In fact, there's a quote here that says that to be well-rounded, students will be encouraged to be informed and knowledgeable in other areas such as music, uh, sports, arts, and everything. This is page 68 of that 300-page document. Um, and music education is listed as compulsory, page 106. As you can see there, I highlighted the word music for you in that, in that picture. Uh, and it says here, even I, I probably took an extract out in line with policy that states that blah, 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 and it goes on. Okay. But if you look carefully, there's a line that says that according to additionally, all music incorporating visual arts, music education, health and physical education classes into the curriculum. Okay. So now the thing is, then you sort of ask, hang on, this is a blueprint that was written in 2013. Why perhaps are we not seeing this being cascaded down perhaps? Now, to understand this, you also need to understand that term. In order for you to produce a school music teacher, it's not something that you can also create overnight. Um, for more than three generations, four generations since we had Madeka, we've all learned science, mathematics, and languages. But if you think, think carefully about the music education as being, it's mainly only urban. Okay? And in terms of music education at higher institutional levels, Yes, at this point of time, nearly every urban university has a music department or faculty. Uh, I was privileged to be in University of Malaya when it formed ours in 1998. Um, but right now, there are more than 10, more than 10 public and private universities in Malaysia that has got good music educational um, topics in terms of the core undergraduate and postgraduate subjects. Huh? Not as an elective only. But as you can imagine, not all these graduates go out and go back as a national teacher so, or as a teacher teaching in national schools. Not all of them do that. So that funnel that goes back to national education is still very small. And the majority is still predicated on the private music sector to do the necessary in encouraging um, what you call music education. And you might want to note that the next point that I was going to highlight in that finding is this page that says, and it's at the bottom, uh, private schools and international schools offer more enrichment activities like drama, music, blah, 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 page 196 of that national blueprint. It acknowledges it acknowledges specifically that it is actually the private sector that is actually pushing more for this because they have a bigger pool of funding. And yes, funding comes into this matter a lot. We recognize also that for the efforts of all parents who have helped their child into music education, it is not a cheap enterprise at all. Mili can tell you, yes, you know, you can say it's singing, you don't have to buy anything, no, 
a lot of things you have to buy. You have to buy books. You have to buy some instrument to accompany yourself. You have to keep, you know, there are a lot of things you have to do. Far less talking about those more popular, um, those other uh, uh, instruments such as even guitar, violin, piano, whatever else. There is an investment to go into this. Investment of not just equipment, investment of time, investment of effort. And to be able to then network with other students who can do the necessary, as we said to you earlier, not just playing alone, but playing in a group, like how that general physical education works, where the child goes out and just be healthy in exercising. So similarly, in the musical content is like, you join a choir, you join a band, and you actually have that group activity that helps with all those benefits that we saw earlier in the presentation. But it takes a village to make this work. Uh, even as we recognize World Music Day today, and there's a lot of musical activity already going on. But to recognize also the efforts of the teachers and the parents in, in getting a child to learn music is not an easy task. Even more so now in pandemic, when all we have is just this square box, you know, that we all have to deal with. Um, some are more successful in transitioning, others are not. Um, I, I don't take glee, I don't take happiness in saying this, that one of the biggest, best views of our Trinity College Facebook videos was one we did last year in MCO 1.0. Um, it was just called, how do you teach online? But it had, it had more than 10,000 views within the first two months for everyone who just wants to know how to teach online. Well, it's not that they, they had to hear from me. They could, there are a lot of other places they could do it. But um, my point was that it is basically uh, a teaching industry where a lot is always predicated on meeting someone and be able to um, feel that presence of space in music. And to be devoid of that now is a big struggle for a lot of teachers. Um, I totally understand and appreciate the efforts people like Meili and all are doing in reaching out to students through this digital space. Um, but at the same time, there is definitely a benefit we can learn. Why do I say this? Remember that Mark Romson's um, Bruno Mars example of Uptown Funk? He only made a number one possible because in that space, he was in a studio endless times, endless days and weeks to create Uptown Funk. Uptown Funk wasn't composed on a live space. It was composed in a studio. What we're saying in this is that all the exam boards, not just Trinity, have actually transitioned to what you call a video kind of upload as well, where your child, where you as a student, you can record yourselves. And why is this important? This is important because as Bruno Mars recorded his guitar part 84 times to get up, you learn the benefits of recording something. Listening back, analyzing what you just played and go, hey, that sounded horrible. Let's try it again. Maybe not 84 times. But the point is that the child begins to learn a new way of a 21st century skill. That happens in YouTube. All these YouTubers, what do they do? Just record themselves and just stream. And before you think, oh, hang on, that's not a career. It is a career. And I think Molly is definitely nodding ahead on that one. Yes. So, and as a parent, I'm a parent. I've, I've got four kids and I can tell you for some thinking, what are you going to do? But I don't have to worry. They, they have better ideas than me in what they want to do. You know, um, they are teaching me every day what they are learning from the internet. I'm actually learning along with them and seeing all these new ways in which what they call the word monetization, unboxing, uh, words which I never even think of it works in English, you know. It, it works for them. So, you know, rather than I even illuminate more about World Music Day and what you can learn from it and the benefits of education, I think the kids today are learning a lot of themselves already from these ways in which they record, they learn. 
uh, maybe us as teachers need to play catch up, you know, in order to stream them in the right direction. But um, firstly, I mean, in this space too, I'd like to recognize all those teachers who have really worked hard to make online possible. Um, if you still feel you do need questions, I'm sure someone like me Lee will provide uh, some advice too, you know, or uh, for Trinity's point of view, you can always look into our Facebook, uh, Trinity College London dash Malaysia. Uh, we have a Facebook page that we have got our content as well. Or you can always visit us um, on our website and we can also help you with questions about teaching. Okay, so um, I think I probably said a lot. Maybe too much. Probably welcome questions. Ameli, over to you. Mr. Um, Ramesh? Yeah, I think uh, it was a very, very <clears throat> enlightening presentation. Uh, indeed, so many things that we took for granted, you know, about music, and uh, you have given a very in depth look at the benefits of learning music. <clears throat> The other day I was, when I was speaking to Mr. Ku while planning this, um, I shared with him my experience. Uh, I was not directly involved in any of this AV start of music, though I was in my school band, uh, I used to play the drum. Uh, it was exciting, it was fun, uh, you know. But I've seen my cousins and all being drilled to play music and I told him of one particular cousin who was so very overwhelmed in forced to play the scale because those days when it was taught it was like hours of practicing your skill and this poor child uh, you know after she graduated from grade eight she refused to play the piano anymore you know it is that traumatic i i believe so it is very sad that at that time you know parents were just uh, wanting to you know give them music education but to not really uh, allowing them to have fun but I believe it's changed very much. And as you have rightly pointed, uh, Mr. Eugene, the benefits uh, of improving one's self-esteem, uh, those are all things that perhaps, we, you know, we never really looked at it, you know. But indeed, when I, I see musicians, they're so very confident with themselves and so very happy. Uh, most musicians that I see, they're very, very happy and jovial and um, you know, uh, coincidentally, yesterday I watched a documentary. The first president of Zambia, one Dr. Kaunda, he was a musician and he's 88 years old. And you, and you see him speak and in any gatherings that he's very, very popular, in any gatherings that he, he's invited, he sings and he plays uh, the guitar and the piano. So I think that that kind of also leads to what what you have mentioned earlier about uh, happiness and uh, you know contentment that a musician or, or I wouldn't say musician anybody who loves music yeah so I think I'm just trying to give a, a contextualize the the points that you have raised here so thank you I, I'm very very uh, encouraged by your presentation. I see there's quite a lot of uh, comments and uh, questions being posted, but maybe maybe you'd like to say something before we go to the Q&A session. Is there something you'd like to share? Um, actually, I'm feeling very happy at the moment um, because it is not often that um, you are sharing in this way, Mr. Ramesh, Mr. Eugene. Um, it is not a work situation. And I feel that this kind of release is so much needed during this pandemic times. And uh, I, I am taking to heart a lot of things that Eugene said just now. I'm being reminded too, okay? So I feel very happy and humble at the moment. Thank you. I would like to pass this back to you, Mr. Ramesh. I think there are lots of questions coming. Yeah, yeah. we will go to the uh, the questions, but before we let you go, uh, you still owe us one of your saparno, yeah. So we'll come back to that one day. Uh, 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 <laughs> I would love to hear you sing. You know, uh, I told Mr. Ku many times, and we'll save that for another occasion. Yeah, but we're not going, we're not going to let okay, you go okay, off okay. yet. All right, so let's go to the questions eh? now. Um, many co very positive comments. But let me go through one. This is from uh, Ralsa. Ralsa, in fact, is one of our very young students. She's probably about nine. 
and she's very active in all our webinars. So her question is, I would like to get a clearer picture on uh, can a musician good at sports cope concurrently? I think can it be good at uh, sports, music yeah. and sports, can it? Okay, um, let me answer this. I was never good at sports much, okay? Um, but I was a swimmer. Um, all I can say is this. Um, you see, the, from the finding that we saw, and I highlighted to you from um, Professor uh, Susan Harlem um, uh, in the UK, it actually said that there was no improvement in sports, probably because what music was doing was doing the same thing as sports in that sense that it was basically articulating what you call all your cognitive uh, movements in that way. But it doesn't mean to say that you cannot be good in music and sports. It's just saying it does. If you learn music, it doesn't sort of incrementally improve your sports anyway because you are using that similar what you call uh, um, um, things in your brain to work that muscles and things like that. But it doesn't mean you can't be good in both. You can. Why not? Of course, it all comes down to one of those points that I think the benefits was time management. I think time management becomes so important today, um, uh, Railsa, for, for you all, because we only got 24 hours in a day. Um, and if you are able to understand the basics of what you are learning, be it that sport that you're picking up, or be it the instrument, as you say, piano, that you're playing. And if you understand the concepts of what goes into it and are able to practice them out in a very effective way, then yes, there is a good chance that because you are using that similar, what you call um, um, part of your brain where it's coordinating your hands, your feet, your movement, that there is no reason why you can't be good at both. Because it's essentially using that part of the brain that having to coordinate those things as well, right? So, but of course, as a pianist, all I would say is watch your hands, you know, but they're important. Having said that, I was a goalkeeper in my football team, also in my school class, okay, which my mother nearly killed me because, you know, I'm a pianist. But um, I wasn't good at my feet, as I said to you earlier, I wasn't good at sports. So, I think a parent say, go back to the goal, you know, you've got to jag out with your tangan, you know? So, but anyway, that's, that would be my answer. There's no reason why you can't be good at both as long as you manage your time properly in both. Okay, I hope that answers. Uh, well, uh, well, that's that's yeah, I think uh, that's, uh, um, I hope that answers the question as well. Yep. And uh, we move on to the next question from Kelly. Yeah? Good afternoon. Could I inquire the benefits of music in education? Example, Finland requires its citizens to have music in their early uh, education and how do we incorporate STEM uh, into STEAM in the secondary school? All right, I think part of it was answered during your earlier part when you presented about the National Education Blueprint. Uh, but please feel free to uh, explain, you know, or give your thoughts on this question. Um, okay, in the blueprint for Malaysia, which I think also is followed through from the ideas of a lot of um, advanced nations is um, there are two things here in terms of the music being part of it. One is extracurricular, one is classroom. Um, I would say the extracurricular is already possibly happening a lot in private schools and international schools whereby the uh, individual singing or instrumental teacher goes in and teach the child some form of um, extracurricular instrumental or, or vocal learning. The other one is the classroom, uh, which is also actually supposed to be a core subject in schools, even in Malaysia. But yeah. as I, I highlighted the difficulty because of the lack of music teachers funneling through the system to be able to deliver classroom teaching. But hey, I tell you, it's also it's not, it's not happening, it is. Um, I, I, we just finished a special needs month in May where we, had, we highlighted a lot of special needs musicians uh, through our, our Facebook page. And um, if you can visit our page, you will see that we had highlights of special needs kids even all the way from national schools in Sabah. As a brilliant teacher called Stefano Lucas was working with um, um, little kids in Putatan and uh, Tuaran area. And they were using traditional instruments, you know, and they are special needs kids, but they're all playing music. And this is in a special needs school, Gabang San school as well, you know. 
So um, great effort from these teachers to make it happen. But yes, it's few and far in between. It is not in the mainstream yet. So um, there is still a lot of effort. Uh, the blueprint says that yes, the extracurricular is the first and easier way to make that incorporation of music into STEM. Okay. Yeah, okay. So I think, uh, yeah, that answers uh, Kelly's uh, query. Uh, yeah. And also Kelly mentioned about incorporating STEM into STEAM, you know, the STEM is science, technology, and engineering math, yeah. and the A part is art. So I think that happens the moment you have music, music is art. So probably that happens automatically, you know, when you, you incorporate music, then you get the STEAM, uh, you know, going as well. All right, so we move on to uh, Purni's uh, query, yeah. Hi, sir. How can one integrate English with music for college students? Um, well, this, um, how do you integrate music? Well, I'll tell you what interesting way you can do it. Mainly, you teach um, English folk songs, right? So many of these folk songs are actually poetry, isn't it? Yeah, interesting. So, that, I don't think there's a much difficult way in which you can extract. Um, poetry, uh, of which are incorporated into songs as well, um, and which, you know, they can be learnt as verse and as also as song. That's that, that could be one way. I mean, I'm just sticking off the top of my head. But, um, you know, verse writing, mainly, isn't it? Melody writing, which they got verse and poetry. Um, if I may add, to learn a new language from scratch, it's been proven many times that if we learn 20 songs from that language, we can then begin to learn the various inflections of speech in the new language. If perfecting the inflection is what is wanted, pronunciation. So uh, learning 20 songs, as, especially as you say, folk songs, um, really will enrich the vocabulary and help in the particular dialect inflection. That has been proven. You can Google for this information. Though. All right. <clears throat> okay. Thanks for adding that, uh, Mimi. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank right. you so much. But um, the question came up because uh, I feel that my most of my students are very shy. You know, when you ask them to speak or, I mean, sing songs and all that, they feel like it's like, oh, why teacher me? I mean, all well, that kind of question. But then I feel that uh, integrating music with uh, language learning is something which is really, really good. Like what you said, like poetry, you know, that kind of things. But it's just that a bit now I feel it's so hard when it comes to online um, classes like Zoom classes and all that, where I need to... I feel like it's so hard for me to explain to them and asking them to sing. It's a bit like, I mean, when it comes to poetry, maybe it's like more on writing, but then I don't see their expression and all that. So I feel that um, no, that's the issues that when it comes to online, I feel uh, no, it is being stopped. Um, I, I know, I hope I'm not going out of turn by saying this, but um, Maybe the pop songs of today may not be as fantastic poetry writing, but at some point they're lyrics. And of that lyrics, a child may be understanding the contemporary feel of English which they can read. And from the reading of the verses, they can articulate it into song, which they would know is their song, you know, Coldplay. They, they would know things like that, Adele. So you could use the pop songs as a way in which they read the text of that lyrics. Yeah, that's a good way to reach out. To and people. then you reach out to them through that song. Then yeah. they sing the song and they play out the, the character of what that song is asking. Yeah. That's interesting, sir. Thank you. And thanks, Ms. Lee. Okay, thanks for the question, uh, Purni. Uh, we move on to Mr. Manohoran's uh, question. Uh, he says, I talk to students on career. That's next step. Many children have a passion for music education. But many parents do not view music education, but ask children to take business course. Parents do not consider music as a long-term career. Eugene, how do you answer the parents? 
I will answer back by saying that I don't think anybody top someone just playing computer games can earn two million a month. <laughs> Okay, so there are a lot of things, as I said to you, even I myself as a parent, I would not have thought, you know, what is my kid doing sitting there in front of a computer playing? But then, but then, my own classmate, um, after his son finished Form 5, got him into what you call a, a, a gaming school for two years. And he's now a semi-professional. A semi-professional computer gamer. Okay, that's probably one extreme. Um, let me turn the let me spin this the other way around for you, uh, Mister. Uh, yes. I when I was in school, I knew a friend of mine. He was a very good. He could cook really well, and while the rest of us went into college and university, he became a chef. And he set up his own restaurant later. Um, he's now director of um. He, he was at one time down in Sheraton. Um, KL, um, director of banquet. And he started off his career a lot earlier, far earlier than us, you know, but he made it. He, he actually made it, but no one at, at a time, and this, I'm sorry, I, I'm home, I'm not showing my age, but, but I mean, I made my 50s, okay, so I can tell this is back in the 80s, who I thought it could be a cook, you know, can, can be a career. But the damn fella did it, you know, and damn good cook too. So the point is that I would say, you know, you you can't actually tell a parent, uh, yeah, this is this could be good because they may say no, it doesn't really yield any careers. But careers today have changed so much that all you can tell the parent is, have you considered something that you may not have seen in a child? And it may not even be music. It may be music. It may not be art. It may be art. It may be business. For goodness, they may go into business and don't have a business mind. That that's the point. Yeah. True. Yeah. So, um. Yeah, so think... the, but to answer also how good is music as a career if you want to go into it bole cari makan as they always say you know the word bole cari makan yeah. uh, the answer is yes there is always a lot of new areas even within the music career that they can look into now traditionally everyone knows about teaching um, mainly be one of those uh, what you call the doyans of the teaching community here will tell you yes teaching is a big a part of um, music and uh, community but not only just teaching uh, there is now music management there is um, music administration um, there is even fields in which you have to mix law and music why because of copyrights so about, you know uh, sound sound engineering is that part yes. of yeah? yes so yes some, yeah. even more so now i myself i, I you know i um, recently, we, we sent a message of encouragement to all everyone in the music community over this MCO 4.0, as they call it. You know, and we, we asked them, in these four weeks, you know, learn something new yourself as part of you know, your objective from being at home. About other things, we told them, we learned three things, and one was learning. So then I thought, I said, hang on, I'm asking everyone to learn, what am I going to do? I thought, okay. I start learning video editing because I could do all these things and I got one staff and I got two fantastic staff who does most of the edits for me. But because it's, the work is so great, making, I can't be loading them too much. I also could learn video editing. So in these four weeks, I really took a course on video editing. You know, and I, I bought the Adobe um, Rush Pro, which is like, not cheap. But learning, learning things which um, sound tech, it's really, really important today. And this is all streaming through the internet. You have to know how to mix your sounds. You have to know how to mix all the channels. It's not something you can just kick overnight. So there's definitely a career in that too. Uh, Manu Aaron, there's definitely a career in all that. But again, the child needs to kuna otak. Doesn't matter what they do, right? Yeah. Foundation. I think what maybe is the foundation with music, once they have that, uh, just like the same queries that we also have, what are the careers in STEM, you know? Uh, are you assured, you know, uh, is my kid assured that there's going to be a job waiting for him if he do the sciences? What about engineering, you know? So uh, this is very volatile. The, the, the industry is so volatile. Uh, a career today in five years may not, uh, may cease to exist, uh, being replaced by AI and robotics. So uh, it's going to be very difficult, I find, you know, and somebody asks, but what I tell them in especially from the STEM point of view is that once they have this basic knowledge and skills and talents, they can apply it in 
to every other industry. You know, so it's, it's interesting what you said, Ramesh, about AI. If you were to Google the BBC, uh, and you Google BBC, which which job will be replaced by an AI? You try that in Google, yeah. Mr. Google. In every other the industry. arts subjects and the arts professions are the one they are least Affected, replaced yeah? by AI. Okay. Yeah, yeah, because there's okay. a lot of creativity that you know. I yes. think you know, AI can't replicate. Correct. Right. Okay. So, in the interest of time, and to be fair to our other speaker uh, sure. questions, and let me quickly yeah. run through. Sure. Uh, this is from Chin, uh, who asked about how effective is online classes for kids in learning piano. Ah, okay. Very good question. Very, very good question. How effective for this? A lot depends on how good the teacher is able to collate the information and pass it on to the child. A few things. One is the connectivity of the internet, the connectivity of the teacher to the child. Okay? So it's very difficult for me to say how effective it is because essentially I've seen a lot of successful lessons being delivered online. Uh, we ourselves have worked with a lot of educators over our Facebook page to deliver free content on how this can be done. So we have evidence to show that online delivery on music lessons can be done as well. But a lot is predicated on how the teacher works with the child, how well is the environment on both sides, and how well is the connectivity of that. Um, it is effective. Uh, of course, the way in which it's delivered cannot be just um, the same way as a face-to-face -face lesson. Okay? So um, but evidence have shown, yes, it does work. Okay, so, it, so thanks for that. I hope that answers Kelly's uh, query. Uh, we move on to a few, these are comments from Relsa, and they all seem to be very appreciative. Uh, thanks, thanks. Uh, Kelly has another question. Agree music can increase their linguistic and uh, expressive communication. So that's more of a comment that she's in agreement. Uh, Relsa says that I started my music lesson when I was eight months. Wow. Okay. And uh, now I'm 10, go, doing my AB RSM, grade 5 theory, and Yamaha okay. grade 8. Uh, it makes a very disciplined person. All mm -hmm. right. This is more of a comment. You know, she's sharing her own experience. And I must say that Ralsa is uh, extremely creative. Now I see that she's also a very disciplined person. I can vouch for that. Uh, she has come to our center to, to display some of her lovely works. And, uh, you know, and she's very punctual in coming, uh, joining us for all our sessions. Uh, I think, uh, Rasa, uh, we wish you the very best because you have got a very bright future ahead of you. All right. Uh, moving on to Kelly again. Uh, she says there's an introduction about music and sound engineering in Pitch Perfect Tree, the movie that's very interesting. I think this is a comment. You want to mention something on this, Eugene? Uh, I think a lot of movies do show various different ideas of what um, um, music, either in form of music making, music composing, uh, music editing, um, sound and tech and everything else, you know, um, sound engineering. So yes, there is a lot of examples which, you know, um, should be able to show a body of work to parents that there's a lot to be learned from music. But of course, um, as a musician, I also need to remind musicians that there is a life outside of music, okay? <laughs> there is. So it's always a case of balancing yourself with everything. And that's where the threads of understanding this and that, and like I said to you earlier, my mom always says, Una ota. if you use your brains and put everything together, you will learn more with an amalgamation of things than just one track. Okay, all right. So that's uh, a good comment. Uh, I think we'll just go through a few more. Uh, we've got, we've just exceeded our time by one, but to be fair to Eugene, are you okay with time, Eugene? Thanks. Thanks. All right, so we go, uh, and, and maybe you're okay as well, yeah? No, I, I, I think it's okay. <laughs> I'm very happy at the moment, it's okay. I can see the glow in your face, yeah. yeah. So we'll just maybe, uh, you know, just run through these questions and then we'll stop at the, you know, where uh, as we come to maybe 5 or 10 at the very most. Yeah. So another 10 more minutes to go. That's okay, Eugene. Yeah. Okay. So another 10 minutes. Uh, this is injury time. All right. 
So um, ah, someone said the football. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, we have Mr. Lim uh, Ling Hong to everyone. Now he says that um, how can one ensure continuous growth at music as music educator in order to deliver better music lessons and raise overall quality? Okay, um, good question. I think continuous um, learning comes in various different forms. Uh, I think I mentioned in that um, session, in that short video I put on Facebook for all of you all in the MCO 4.0, I said what, learning. In the learning space, actually, if you just Google YouTube alone, there are so much you can pick up on it. Or maybe you say, hang on, I don't know whether this is iffy or this is really okay or not. Um, you can check on the comment section to see whether what is being actually said, yes or no, the comment section will tell you, the grading of that particular video will tell you, or if you still feel this is just YouTube, go into online courses. There are a lot on the YouTube, there's, sorry, a lot on the, uh, in cyberspace um, from reputable um, online sites about professional learning. And content, content you can find a lot. I mean, if you want to, I don't just want to just put a plug on Trinity, but if you find on most exam boards, you go to our web page, we provide free content to help you. Uh, for Trinity's perspective, is from our Facebook, Trinity College London, Malaysia. Or you can visit our website, we can help you with content as well to help you improve. But it's not just from the exam boards. You can find um, courses which relate to uh, teaching. Uh, there's one called Southeast Asia Online Academy. They are all my good friends um, down in Singapore, Indonesia and part of Malaysia too. So they provide online courses as well that you can earn. So there are a lot of things that you do need to find. Of course, you need to take an effort to be able to progress yourself. And I'm glad that you are already asking how do I continually um, learn because that is always part of continuing education. It doesn't matter what age. Okay. Uh, Lily, you want to say something? No. Okay. So we move on to the next. I think this is more of a comment from Linus. Uh, Linus says, all should be users of AI. It will enhance our ability to deliver, including music. Just like uh, all of us using AI and taking great photos with our phones. All right. So I think he's in agreement that uh, AI is the way to go forward. Right. Um, uh, Purni says, great sharing. I think these are all comments and appreciation of your wonderful presentation, Eugene. Likewise, Kelly says, uh, thank you and appreciate the session very much. And uh, we move on to... Uh, you know, uh, Linus has got another comment here, a suggestion, a uh, very good point. He says that if any of you are interested in video editing, uh, as just now Eugene shared, you can try out DaVinci Resolve. Uh, from Black Magic Design. Okay, so I think that's a, a software maybe. Yeah. yeah. And uh, he has very kindly shared the link as well. So all our listeners, all our followers, you've got a very good lead here uh, that if you're interested in the video editing as also mentioned by Eugene. So I think music and editing and all this goes hand in hand. All right. Uh, Mr. Ku, our friend has given a comment here to say that uh, it has been suggested to use DaVinci Resolve video editing software. It's a, it's free and powerful. Wow, that's even more exciting, you know? Anything that's free is exciting. Great. Um, and another comment from uh, Linus to say that a uh, very good suggestion from Eugene, right? Um, and he has learned something. So, all right, thanks for sharing. Uh, he says that my daughters did the drama exam at Trinity College, London. You want to comment something on that? Uh, it's uh, to do with uh, Trinity College, but this is a drama exam. Yeah, we provide not just as uh, probably you may know us as a music exam board, but we actually performing arts exam board. We do assessment in drama, in English language, as well as music. Okay, so that's a uh, uh, new uh, good thing to share. Uh, kudos to Disney. This is from Kelly. Kudos to Disney and high school music. There's a lot of opportunities to spark interest in adolescents in music. 
and daily life can increase happiness index. All right. So this is a comment also. I think there's a lot of uh, uh, what you call uh, programs and movies that have actually sparked uh, inspirations among the youngsters. So that's a good comment. Uh, we probably have come to our last question. This is from a comment from Eugene, is it? I was just uh, highlighting to uh, Lin Ling Hong, just asking about continuing education. So I basically oh, asked him to check out the academy. All right. The Southeast Asia Online Academy. Maybe uh, Ling Hong, if you're still on, you can just check this out. Right. So perhaps we just take this last question. There's a few more down that I don't have time to scroll. I want to give another few minutes to Eugene to wrap up. So we'll just take this last question from Mr. T.Y. Mr. or Miss, I'm not sure, T.Y. Mock. Uh, we can introduce some science facts about music, sound, waves, uh, sound wave propagation, wave theory of uh, sound, harmonics, etc. Unfortunately, pandemic now, so uh, possible to do it after the music camp. Uh, this sounds very interesting, Mr. W uh, Ms. Um, is it Mr. or Ms. I'm not sure, just call T.Y. T.Y., uh, this is something that we would love to explore at our center. You know, so and also goes to Eugene. If there's anything that you think that can be very uh, experiential, experiential meaning the science behind, the technology behind, the innovation behind, uh, that's all very STEM related. We can conduct a workshop. So likewise, uh, uh, TY's suggestion, you know, to do this kind of a thing. I like the idea of uh, exploring with the vibrations. You know, so these are all science. Yeah. So this is very good for us to, to explore once things are back to normal at our center. Uh, we can go down, uh, but I'm afraid that, uh, you know, the comments are there. Anybody we can, oh, Luis has got one comment here. Luis is also our good friend, a STEM partner who runs a platform uh, on the planet. So all these contents will also be shared on that, you know, as a permanent referral. Uh, video contents as well as uh, what you call tutorials. We are, we are trying to build up that uh, uh, that platform called STEM uh, LMS platform. No? And um, Louis' comment is that I'm video editing teacher. Call if needed. All right. So if you need any help on editing or to teach on editing, video editing, Louis is also available. Uh, all right, so with that, I think I would like to, you know, ask Eugene to maybe, you know, just uh, give a short wrap up, you know, what are the key messages that you like our audience to take home, you know, from this wonderful sharing session. We still have uh, 25 participants uh, listening to you, uh, at least on this platform. I'm not too sure about our other uh, YouTube channel, you know, I'm sure there are some people following. So what would you like to message would you like them to take back? Well, I think firstly is uh, for all of you all who really do enjoy music and you say you do, um, it is great to know that everyone appreciates the benefits of actually what music can do and as some of you have highlighted. But it's also important to also understand that the, the musical journey takes a lot of people to encourage that progression. It is not just down to one individual. And more importantly, it is an investment of time, of effort, um, and even of resources in terms of um, you know, um, space, money, and everything else. So, um, so remember the next time when you listen to that next um, pop chart number one, do appreciate the efforts it took the team of people and the songwriters to get to that point that we all can enjoy and we call it music. Wonderful. Yeah, that's a lovely wrap up. Uh, Mili, would you like to say something before we uh, close this session? Um, I think all is well said. Excellent. We have to thank Mr. Eugene Lin. We have to thank all the participants who are actually sharing you know, into this session. This is exactly what we need more of at this time. Yes. So, Back to you, Ramesh. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mimi. So I agree. You know, so in summing up, firstly, thanks again so much, Eugene, for this wonderful sharing. Uh, thanks, Mimi, for giving the introduction. 
And to all our audience, thank you so much for your lovely comments. I can see there's a lot of depth uh, in the in the line of questioning. So they're really serious, you know. And so which means to say they've gained a lot. They were very appreciative from the comments that I see. They're very appreciative of you sharing. Most importantly, you know, our objective of keeping them engaged and enlightened and knowledgeable, I think I feel happy that that has been met. You know, because during this downtime, uh, it can be very depressing if you don't have much things to do, but if you acquire some new knowledge and new skills, that's wonderful. Uh, so in this one hour of sharing, I think, I hope uh, those who've been following, you have gained something. But most importantly, do stay in touch because there'll be more such programs. And uh, once we are up and running at our center, we would definitely invite you back to do things, yeah? Exciting things and so on. All right. So with that, I would like to officially uh, close this session and to thank our host, uh, of course, uh, Meili, together with uh, somebody who's at the back, uh, back scene, you know. Uh, I'm so tempted to use another word, but let's not get into it. You know, he's at the back scene trying to make this very, very uh, successful. And that's Mr. Fu. Thank you, Mr. Fu, for this, uh, introducing our wonderful speaker. And we look forward to more such sessions with Eco Hub Community. And signing off for Stanford for All Makers Space. Bye.